Stephanie from, Ply- Stephanie from Plymouth was battling cancer when she collapsed at home. Her mum rang 999, desperate for help. She only lived a couple of miles from the hospital, but they couldn't prioritise her. She was 26 when she died waiting for that ambulance. Mr Speaker, I know members from across the House will be as shocked and appalled as I am about the case of David Carrick. The abuse of power is truly sickening and our thoughts are with his victims. The police must address the failings in this case, restore public confidence and ensure the safety of women and girls. There will be no place to hide for those who use their position to intimidate those women and girls or those who have failed to act to reprimand and remove those people unfit from office. Mr Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others. In addition to my duties in this House, I shall have further such meetings later today. If our heart attack victim had called for an ambulance in Peterborough at 12.03, it wouldn't arrive until 10 past two. These are our constituents waiting for ambulances I'm talking about. If it was Northampton, it wouldn't arrive until 12 past two. Order, order, order. Mr Blister, I hope you want to see the rest of the questions out, because I want you to be here. We're well, going to have to be here better. Come on, get on. Mr Speaker, I'm talking about our constituents. If they were in Northampton, it wouldn't arrive until 20 past two. If they were in Plymouth, it wouldn't arrive until 20 to three. That's why someone who fears a heart attack waiting more than two and a half hours for an ambulance not the worst case scenario, just the average wait. Yep. So for one week, will he stop blaming others, yeah. take some responsibility, yeah. and just admit under his watch the NHS is in crisis, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Mr. Speaker, I noticed the one place the honourable gentleman didn't mention was Wales. Yeah. Where we know ambulance times are even worse than they are in England, Mr. Speaker. No, and the reason, the reason that is the case, because this is not about politics. This is about the fact that the NHS in Scotland, in Wales, in England, is dealing with unprecedented challenges, recovering from COVID, dealing with a very virulent and early flu season, and everyone is doing their best to bring those wait times down. But again, I'll ask him, if he believes so much in improving ambulance wait times, why won't he support our minimum safety legislation? Well, Mr Speaker, the specific and practical things we are doing to improve ambulance times are clear. We are investing more in urgent and emergency care to create more bed capacity. We are ensuring that the flow of patients through emergency care is faster than it ever has been. We are discharging people at a record rate out of hospitals to ease the constraints that they are facing. And we are reducing the call-out rates by moving people out of ambulance stacks and being dealt with in a community. Now, these are all very practical steps that will make a difference in the short term. But I ask him again and again, and we know why. The reason that he is not putting patients first when it comes to ambulance waiting times is because he is simply in the pockets of his union paymaster. Stephanie from, Ply- <laughs> Stephanie from Plymouth was battling cancer when she collapsed at home. Her mum rang 999, desperate for help. She only lived a couple of miles from the hospital, but they couldn't prioritise her. She was 26 when she died waiting for that ambulance. A young woman whose life was ended far too soon. And as a dad, I can't even fathom that pain. So on behalf of Stephanie and her family, Will you stop the excuses, stop shifting the blame, stop the political games, and simply tell us when will he sort out these delays and get back to the 18-minute wait? Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, of course Stephanie's case is a tragedy. Of course, people are working as hard as they can to ensure people get the care they need. But he talks about political games. He is a living living example of playing political games when it comes to people's health care. I've already mentioned what's been going on in Wales. Is he confident in the Labour-run Wales NHS that nobody is suffering right now? Of course they are, Mr Speaker, because the NHS everywhere is under pressure. What we should be 
doing is supporting those doctors and nurses to make the changes that we are doing to bring the care to those people. But I'll ask him this. If he is so, so concerned, so concerned about making sure that the Stephanies of the future get the cares they need, why? Why is he des- denying those families the guarantee of emergency life-saving care? So that's his answer to Stephanie's family. Deflect, blame others, never take responsibility. Just like last week, he won't say when he's going to deliver the basic minimum service levels people need. Mr Speaker, over the 40 minutes or so that these sessions tend to last, 700 people will call an ambulance. Two will be reporting a heart attack. Four will be reporting a stroke. But instead of the rapid help they need, many will wait and wait and wait. So if he won't answer any questions, will he at least apologise for the lethal chaos under his watch? Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, he... uh He asks about the minimum safety levels. We we will deliver them as soon as we can pass them. Why won't he vote for them, first of all? But, Mr Speaker, Speaker, we we are delivering on the people's priorities. As we've seen this week, the Honourable Gentleman will just say anything if the politics suits him. It's as simple as that. He will break promises left, right and centre. He promised to nationalise public services. He promised to have a second referendum. He promised to defend the mass migration of the EU. And now we're apparently led to believe that he... Oh, oh, I expect the front bench just to keep a little quiet, because if they don't, there's somewhere else for them to shout their noise. Prime Minister. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, if we are going to deliver for the British people, people need to have strong convictions. But when it comes to the honourable gentleman, he isn't just for the free movement of people, he's also got the free movement of principles. Yeah.